Friday and Good Morning Waverly. Good Morning Waverly, I'm Shelby Granath. And I'm Kelsey Bemis. This is your web update for Waverly Newspapers. Two Iowans were recognized by Governor Branstad Monday for their service during Hurricane Sandy. Mark Jaquith and Levi Gullick of Waverly Power and Light traveled to Des Moines for a special ceremony in their honor. Both traveled to Long Island, New York early November where they spent several days working cleanup efforts. The two were part of nearly 10,000 linemen who volunteered their efforts during the storm in Long Island alone. The owner of TJ Digital warns local residents of computer scammers gaining access to home computers. Kevin Jebeck says he's heard from nearly 24 customers who fell victim to a recent scam. An anonymous caller will ask the owner over the phone to log on to a website to delete a virus. By doing so, it allows the scammer access to the civilian's computer home at home. One special election could make two Bremer County schools into one. A simple vote will decide whether to merge the Sumner and Fredericksburg schools as one district. The two area schools have been working under a grade-sharing agreement for nearly a decade. Superintendent Rick Peterson directs both schools with high school principal Alan Eckelman. The vote will take place February 5th. One police officer will become the newest member of the Waverly Police Department. Jared Hartwig served on the Janesville Police Department for six years before joining the Waverly Force. Hartwig will replace Officer Mitch Hagen, who moved out of the state last fall. The new Waverly Police Officer was one of 50 applicants to apply. And now it's time for a look at a unique sport that's right here in the Cedar Valley. It's called silo ice climbing and has been going on for over 10 years. Good morning, Waverly's Jacqueline Schutte and I headed out to learn more about this giant ice sculpture. It's hard to find mountains in the Midwest, but one man made his own. This is Don Briggs, and this is his mountain. A lot of people ask me why, you know, how did I come up with this idea and, and what was it all about? Uh, there's another farm about five or six miles south of here uh, where he and I were really good friends at the time, and I would go and help him chisel plow his ground in the fall. But I was going back and forth, and I kept looking over at these silos, and at the and I thought, you know, I bet you I could rock climb that. But instead of rock climbing, he thought of ice climbing. We took a garden hose with a spray nozzle. We were just lucky that it turned out as good as it did. The ice on the silo is made up of 58,000 gallons of water. And what started out with six people has turned into 200 people climbing up the mountain per weekend. The silo also attracts people from Texas to California to Hong Kong. People well, just want to try it. I think it's a great thing because it gets people outdoors, you know, it gets them busy doing something, and so that's where I get a little bit of gratification. I wanted to see just how hard it was, so I geared up and headed up the vertical ice sculpture. After climbing up half the silo, I realized I couldn't climb any more, but there's always next time. If you think you're up for the challenge, the silo is open for climbing this weekend. Climbers also get the chance to climb at night. Reporting for Good Morning Waverly, I'm Jacqueline Schutte. Don Briggs also said the oldest person to climb the silo is 88 years old. The youngest person who climbed it was only 8 years old. He made it three-fourths of the way up. The silo is open for climbing weekends in the winter when it is under 40 degrees. Briggs also teaches rock climbing courses at the University of Northern Iowa. This has been a web update for Waverly Newspapers. Have a good day, Waverly.